Hello everybody, good morning and welcome. It's lovely to see you if you're here in the church building, if you're joining us on Zoom, and uh, a special welcome to those of you listening on Outreach Radio this morning. It's really good to have you with us as we gather to worship here at St Francis in Valley Park. My name's Sarah, I'm the vicar here, and I'm going to be leading our service this morning. Um, as we start our service, um, I just want to mention some sad news. Um, many of you won't have had the pleasure of meeting Debbie Smith, who has joined us on Zoom over um, the past uh, months. Uh, it's years now, I guess, since our URC friends joined us. And really sadly, um, Debbie's not been well, and she passed away um, in this past week. And I just want to share that, even though many of us may not have met her, she's very much a part of our church family here at St. Francis, and many of you will have known her well uh, from your time at um, the URC Church in Chandler's Ford. And so we just want to uh, be holding her family in prayer, uh, Rob and Emily and um, the boys, and just uh, showing them all our love and comfort at this time. So why don't we just say a prayer together uh, for them as we meet, and then I'm going to say a prayer for us as we start our service together. So let's pray. Lord, as we meet this morning, we just want to thank you for the life of Debbie and we pray for her family at this time, that you would be their comfort and their strength in all that they need to do, and as they miss her so much. Lord, we pray that they might know your presence really closely through this time, and that we might be able to uh, support them and show your love in this situation at this time. And Lord, as we meet to worship you now, we pray that you would come by your Spirit, that we might meet with you this morning as we sing together, as we pray together, as we hear your words. And we pray for our groups meeting in different parts of the church, for the crash, the junior church, and for the youth group, that you would bless every person there. You would bless their leaders and the young people meeting together. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to start our service with some words on the screen, some opening words. I know that uh, if you're listening on the radio, you won't be able to see these, but we trust that you will be able to, uh, to agree in your hearts, and you might want to say an amen at the end. Um, but uh, this is a call to worship. Um, it's a URC call to worship. We're so blessed that we can call on all sorts of resources here in this uh, church that's an ecumenical partnership. So uh, do join with me uh, if you're able to see the words. Join with me in the words in bold. Some opening words as we start our time together. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and poor. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus beckons us to a way of risk, letting go of our security. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus challenges us to listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let us walk his way with joy. And as we meet together, it's really good to just spend a moment bringing to God those things that are on our hearts and minds, things that have got in the way uh, between us and God over the past days and weeks. And so we have a time of confession. Uh, once again, the words will be on the screen. But before we join in this word, these words, let's just take a moment's quiet to bring to mind anything that we would like to confess uh, between ourselves and God this morning. So let's pray. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead and now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And so may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's say together the collect the special prayer for the Sunday before Lent. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to uh, sing our opening song of worship, quite a new song, but just one that reminds us of God's faithfulness. So let's stand if we're able and worship God together this morning. Let's stand. thinking about Lent here at St. Francis Church. So if you're tuning in on the radio, you might uh, want to join us in some of these things. Um, But there are two things that we're going to be thinking about here uh, um, for the uh, course of Lent. So first of all, uh, Lent starts this Wednesday. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that it's Pancake Day on Tuesday. That's the day that you get to use up all of the goodies in your cupboard. I read somewhere, actually, that... um, Uh, In Poland, they have, like, Fat Thursday. I suppose that's Mardi Gras, really, isn't it? But they eat donuts on the 
Thursday before Lent. Now, I don't know if any of you have any Polish connections. I'm kind of wishing I did. Uh, but I know, right? I miss this opportunity. But there is still an opportunity if you are wanting to get your pancakes in, your donuts in. Um, I don't know if you're somebody who gives things up in Lent. Uh, if you are, that's great. Uh, but obviously, Wednesday's the day you begin. Uh, but whether you give something up or you take something up, it, Lent is a really helpful time of reflection, of preparation for Easter, actually. But we, we just spend some time reflecting on the way of the cross. It comes very soon after Christmas, doesn't it? And if we kind of think in terms of Jesus's life, it's kind of like he's only just been born and now we're looking to the cross. Oh my goodness. But I love church seasons because they do help us to spend different times reflecting on the life of Jesus. We've celebrated his birth. We've thought about Epiphany and how uh, he was made manifest to uh, those beyond Israel. Um, and we've had a few weeks just reflecting a little actually on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, that happens to be the readings that have come in. But over Lent, we want to uh, devote some time to the subject of prayer and unanswered prayer and I'm going to speak a bit more about that but we have a series of talks and we have a Lent course and I am going to uh, first of all I was going to invite Nick up but we're going to first of all just have a look at a film that sets the tone for the Lent course we looked at the prayer course one back in 2019 many of you weren't here it seems like another lifetime ago we didn't even know what Covid was in those heady days um, but um, we're going to have a look at the prayer course two over this Lent. You don't need to have done the first prayer course, and I'll give you a little resume anyway shortly. But um, AV team, I wonder if we could have a look at the video, and obviously we're going to enjoy pictures. It's not necessary to have pictures. The words will stand alone. Thanks, team. Welcome to the prayer course part two, Unanswered Prayer. Five interactive discussions designed to address some of the deepest, darkest, most painful questions everyone asks, but let's be honest, sometimes we struggle to share. My name is Gemma Hunt. I'm a wife, a mum, a TV presenter, a Christian and a part-time pirate, just not necessarily in that order. <laughs> I've really been looking forward to these conversations with Pete Gregg about Unanswered Prayer. Partly because I absolutely loved his book, God on Mute, but mostly because I know that this course is going to help so many people all around the world. So you can connect with this course at three different levels. Firstly, there are five videos like this one, introducing the theme of each session and featuring a special guest with a remarkable story. Secondly, there are discussion starters to help you reflect on each theme in a small group or on your own. Thirdly, there's the book which accompanies the course and each session explores two or three chapters of God on Mute, engaging the silence of unanswered prayers. It's cut off just there. Um, but I hope that gives you a flavour about what uh, our Lent course is about. It's five sessions. Uh, if you're already in a small group, uh, your groups will be looking at that. Um, and I know that some of them meet every other week, so you might be extending after Easter, which is just fine. Um, but if you're not in a small group and would really welcome the opportunity to explore that, uh, you are so welcome to join in. Please do have a word with myself or with Nick Grew. And Nick, I'd love to invite you. Oh, you're in the front row. That's happy. That's fantastic. He hasn't got too far to walk. Come up anyway. Come up anyway. Uh, Nick heads up our small groups. And uh, he and I would love to hear from you if you would like to join uh, one of the small groups just for uh, the period of Lent. As I say, it's just five sessions, which makes it, uh, you know, a little more straightforward in super busy lives to commit. But um, previously, when we have done uh, Lent courses, we've looked to preach 
a, a sermon that fits very much with whichever uh, it session is coming up next. But we thought we'd do something a little bit different this time. Um, Nick, what are we going to do? Nick's put together a wonderful sermon series, but tell us about it, Nick. Well, Sarah and I were talking about this, and we realised that because people are doing the course at different stages in two weeks and one week and all the rest, you can't actually cover that on a Sunday. So we were having this conversation about how God says, you know, when you call, I will answer. And I think you said something, well, that's fine, but why? And that phrase, that's fine, but why? Kind of hung in the air, and we looked at one another, and we said, that's a really good set of questions. That's a good question to kind of work with on the Sunday sermons. And so we looked, decided to look at um, people who, if you like, grappled with prayer, struggled in prayer. And I guess I reflect that that question, you know, when God says, if you call, I will answer, can sometimes lead us into thinking that prayer is all about asking a question and God giving us an answer, rather like kind of spiritual slot machine. Now, I know it's not like that. We all would say that, but we tend to treat it like that sometimes. And I suppose I'm thinking that when I pray, it's not so much where it get, what it gets me as where it takes me. And that's what we're looking at with some of these people. So next week, I know we're going to be thinking about the character of Jacob, who actually wrestles with God in prayer, actually and literally wrestles with God in prayer, and he walks away with a new name. He walks away knowing God differently. And interestingly, he walks away with a limp. What's that all about? I was going to say, he gets a new hip while he's at Absolutely. it, Absolutely, maybe Quicker that's than it. on the NHS as Quicker well, on the to NHS. be fair. But, but all those kind of things. So we're going to look also at somebody else, another psalmist who gets very caught up in, very blinkered, and God says, come and worship with me, and I'll give you the big picture. So that's the kind of idea. We're going to look at rest, people who wrestle with God and where it took them. Fantastic, Nick. Thank you so much. Um, Nick's put together that sermon uh, series for us. And if you would like to follow uh, what's coming up next, uh, then there's one of these hard copies at the back, as well as it being in our newsletter. Uh, but if it's the sort of thing you like to bung on your fridge and just check out what's coming up, then please feel free to do so. Is there anything else you want to mention about the um, Lent course, Nick? Not really, except that it really, you know, different groups run it at a different time, but do talk to Sarah or me afterwards if you'd like to. I've had two people already come and approach me, and, you know, it may mean we have to find slots or make up a new group. It doesn't matter. We just want people to engage with this. It's such a good idea, such a good cause. Really recommend it to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so we're going to start uh, shortly by just recapping a little bit about um, the first prayer course that we did. Um, but first of all, um, and very much as a trailer, we're going to have our Bible reading. And I think David's bringing that for us this morning. Uh, thank you so much, David. The Bible reading this morning is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 5. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David. 
Well, we've talked about how, as a church, we're going to be looking at this uh, topic of wrestling in prayer, of unanswered prayer, and I wonder if you are thinking, well, that's a little bit negative. And I just want to start by saying that I believe that prayer works. I don't think it always works the way I want it to work, but I just want to set that tone to say, I really believe in the power of prayer. So uh, I think there are a lot of other people out there who do as well. Apparently there was a, uh, a, a Church of England uh, survey, I and mean, you've got to love that, haven't you? But uh, the Church of England went and asked the general public outside of these walls, do you ever pray? And uh, well over half the people interviewed, people who never go to church, said, well, yes, I do sometimes pray. Um, and I suspect there are many stories outside of the walls of the church of prayer that has been answered, of people meeting with God in unexpected ways. But I think that uh, we also need to be realistic and honest about the times that we are living in. All of us face disappointment from time to time, and many of us go through times of despair and great pain from time to time. We've prayed for peace, and the war in Ukraine goes on. We've prayed for health, and we've endured a pandemic, which we're not totally out of. We've prayed for provision, and there's a cost of living crisis, and increasing levels of poverty and hardship in this country. We've prayed for protection, and there's a death toll of over 40,000 in that terrible earthquake in Turkey and Syria. So where is God in all of this? Is there any point praying when it can feel like it's not making a lot of difference? Is there hope somewhere? How can we stay motivated in prayer and grow in faith? Well, that's exactly why we want to look at this topic over the next few weeks, and I hope that you'll be up for joining us on the journey. But as I said, I wanted to take a few steps back, first of all, and just recall the first uh, prayer course that we did back in 2019, uh, created by the organisation 24-7 Prayer. Um, and as I say, you don't need to have done that at all, um, but if you're interested, I've just produced a summary sheet. It's on a piece of paper at the back of church. Grab it. Uh, I can email it to you if you ask me. It's even got a QR code on it, which will send you to the website associated and give you some great resources on prayer. So do commend those resources to you uh, because they just are really helpful, um, particularly if we are wrestling. And as I say, we will look a lot more about that over the coming weeks. Um, but I wonder if we could have um, the first slide, please, Jeremy. I'm going to sound like Matt Hancock today. Next slide, please. Um, there we go. That's great. Um, so uh, that's the prayer course that we looked at uh, initially. You can settle on that slide for a moment. As I say, if you're listening, you're not going to lose out. Uh, it just uh, helps us to focus a little uh, for those of us here in the room. Uh, that first prayer course was, on, um, was focused on the Lord's Prayer, um, and that's what we're going to take a closer look at this morning, um, which is the reading that David read for us. So could we have the next slide, please, which just gives us the first few verses of the reading that we heard, Matthew 6, verses 5 to 8. Here's a passage where Jesus is teaching us how to pray. His disciples came up to him and said, how are we to pray, Lord? And this is what Jesus told us. But he starts, as you will have noticed, as we read in the opening verses with a little bit of context. He says, don't pray just to look good and don't pray so that uh, just for others to hear you. Do it for God alone. Um, and this doesn't mean that we can't pray aloud in front of other people. Uh, it simply means that when we do, whenever we're praying, we just need to remember that the only person it's for is God. There's an organisation called Christians in Sport, and they produce these great wristbands that say, audience of one. What they're saying is that you are just competing for an audience of God alone. Give it everything. 
Do your best when you compete in sport at any level, but just do it for the Lord. Uh, we're not in competition in prayer ever, but we're not doing it to sound fancy. We're not doing it to make ourselves sound amazing, to use flowery language. We're doing it for an audience of one. And we can be confident that God hears us and understands us, even if we feel a little bit self-conscious. Prayer isn't some sort of magic formula. We don't need formal language. Uh, as it says there, don't heap up empty phrases who think for, in, as the Gentiles do, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. We don't know, uh, we don't need any fancy language uh, because God knows what we need. So could we have the next slide, please? Jesus gives us a prayer that we know so well. He gives us a framework for prayer that covers all that we might need to bring to God. And it's all in the context of an intimate relationship with God as our perfect parent. God made us and he cares deeply for us. He has our best interests at heart and he knows us better than we know ourselves. And that is the context into which we bring our prayers. As we get to know God better ourselves, as we grow in relationship with him, we grow in trust that our prayer is landing. Prayer becomes a conversation an opportunity to pour out our hearts to the one who loves us beyond measure. And so it stands to reason that part of prayer, part of the conversation with our Heavenly Father, is to listen for his gentle whispers, to spend time in his presence just worshipping him for who he is. And maybe we don't actually consider worship as prayer. Maybe we don't actually consider just stopping and listening as prayer. Maybe we don't consider silent contemplation as prayer, but it's so much a part of prayer that half of the prayer course is dedicated to these different ways of praying. And that might be a good reason just to grab the list that I put at the back, have a look at the resources, because it helps us to see how we might spend time listening to God, waiting in his presence and what all that might uh, look like and involve. It's how Jesus tells us to pray. Hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. And this is where we recognise at the very start of the prayer, God's character that's wholly other. It's different to us. I love this bit from Isaiah 40, where God, through his prophet Isaiah, asks the tribe of Israel, why do you say my way is hidden from the Lord? My right is disregarded by God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And it is the everlasting God to whom we pray. The one who is holy, he's not like us. His ways are far beyond our ways. And it's his will that we ask to be done on earth as in heaven. Can I have the next slide, please? So the first half of the prayer that Jesus teaches us is all about recognising this incredible relationship that we are invited into with God about asking for his kingdom to come and his will to be done. It's about asking God to be king in all the situations of this world, that there would be peace, provision for all, restoration and healing. It's a great prayer to pray, to invite God's kingdom to come and to break into this world. And I find it a really helpful image when I don't know how to pray, to consider what it might look like for God to be king in a situation and then to pray about that. What does it look like when God's kingdom comes on earth? Well, that's what Jesus came to show us. That's what we read about in all the gospel stories. So today, it might look like peace in Ukraine, provision for earthquake survivors, 
reconciliation where there's division, freedom from captivity to fear or addiction or abuse. And if you say to me, but I thought you said we're struggling to see that. Well, this is where there's a wrestle, isn't there? We sit here and we sort of know on one hand that God's kingdom is to come on this world and we pray for it, but we don't always see it. And we are living in that space. So let's wrestle with it together because both things are true, both that we don't see God's kingdom in completeness, but also that we can pray and ask for more to happen, to be seen here on earth. Can I have the next slide, please? We are to ask God for his kingdom to come, and we're to ask our Heavenly Father for what we need too. We have a personal God who is interested in our own lives. I know sometimes we think he can't possibly be bothered about me when there's so much terrible stuff going on in the world, but he is. He's got the capacity for both and even more. We're to ask our Heavenly Father for what we need personally. And we're to ask him for our daily bread, and that might be literal material uh, provision. Um, but also Jesus is the bread of life, and we're to ask for more of his presence in our lives. We're also to, uh, uh, we are also to ask God to forgive us. We're not to pretend that we're perfect. He asks us to be honest with God. And Jesus puts quite a high priority on this. I don't know if you noticed that not only was it mentioned in that part of the Lord's Prayer that was read, but just afterwards there was a sort of tag on extra all about forgiveness. It's a really significant part of how we are to pray because Jesus knows that we're going to need to ask for forgiveness very often. I can speak for myself on that perfectly well, but I suspect it might not just be me. But also that we'll need to forgive others with great regularity. And Jesus expands on this, as I say, at the end of our reading. And he notes that the heart that is not open to forgive others will stay closed when God offers us forgiveness ourselves. There's no room for pride in God's kingdom. And that's the priority throughout Jesus' teaching. Can I have the next slide, please? Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. It's a sobering end to the prayer that Jesus teaches us. And it can seem quite superstitious, can't it, in this day and age? What are you talking about devils for, for goodness sake? But Jesus is very clear about the existence of the evil one, the devil. And honestly, we know that there is a force of evil in this world. We see it all the time. And these are some wise words from C.S. Lewis, that famous theologian um, who wrote the following. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. They themselves are equally pleased by both errors and hail a materialist or a magician with the same delight. Well, we need to pray for protection each day, but we can be certain that our God is stronger than any force of evil in this world. It's good to go back and remember to whom we pray. Father, the one whose name is holy and whose kingdom is heaven. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the name above every other name. And as we look at the world around with all its evil and pain, as we cry out to God, it can feel like our prayers maybe go unheard or unanswered. But as we align ourselves with God and his kingdom, we'll start to see a different perspective and I spoke about that last week, and I'm going to shamelessly finish this week with the same picture that I did then from the very start of the Bible. I'll describe it in words as well, but that's the picture up on the screen. Here's what it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. There we read, The earth was a shapeless, chaotic mass, with the Spirit of God brooding over the dark vapours. 
don't want to preempt the prayer course, but we will start to see a different perspective that in the tough times, over the dark chaos, the Spirit of God still hovers. And it's into this darkness and chaos that God said, let there be light. And so there was light. And so we can be confident that God is at work in the darkness, hovering as it were, as a mist over the dark waters, over the dark chaos. He is at work through our groaning and our prayers. And we can trust that as we pray, the darkness will shift. We can trust that whatever the situation, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God our Father. And so let's pray. Lord, would you teach us how to pray? Would you help us to trust in who you are and to know more of your love for us? Keep us faithful in prayer and confident in your ways. And would you shift our perspective that we might see in the ways of your kingdom, that we might understand more of what it means to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. Amen. And so we're going to spend a bit of time in worship. We've already said that is a form of prayer. And feel free to use that uh, as you reflect on these things. Our first song, God, I Look to You, uh, is a wonderful way uh, of helping us have perspective in prayer. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. I just commend that way of being to you, that prayer to you. Um, I find it really helpful and we're going to sing it together now and then move into that wonderful song of worship, my Jesus, my Saviour. So if you'd like to, if you're able to, please stand as we sing. <coughs>
Lord Jesus, thank you that nothing compares to the promise that we have in you. And we pray that as we rest in your love, that we might sense more of your presence. That you would open our eyes to see your kingdom breaking in around us. And that you would give us the courage and strength to pray for more. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do have a seat. And I'd like to invite Linda forward. She's going to bring us our intercessions this morning. Thank you very much, Linda. Shall we pray? Father, we can feel you with us this morning. We thank you. I thank you for the encouragement of Sarah's words this morning. Thank you that we can pray. Thank you that, despite the inadequacy of my words, that I can pray, that you are listening even though we don't understand how, and we struggle to see your answers at times. We praise you for your wonderful gift of prayer. So, Father, we begin our prayers by lifting before you Turkey and Syria. The earthquake and its aftermath have fallen slightly from our news bulletins, but the suffering goes on. And because I don't know how to pray, I'm using a prayer from World Vision. Heavenly Father, our hearts are moved by the effects of the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria, <clears throat> the grief felt by families who have lost loved ones or await news of loved ones is unimaginable. We turn to you, God of all comfort, and ask that you be close to people in the days ahead and that they might know your peace that surpasses all understanding. <coughs> Excuse me. Lord God, we pray for those who have lost their homes or have moved to safety away from tall buildings. Please keep them warm in the midst of this harsh winter and provide all they need. We pray especially for children who are confused and frightened by what is happening. May you be for them an oasis of peace in which to take shelter. Lord God, we thank you for the swift action of those who are already responding. For the rescue teams searching for survivors, we ask for endurance and resilience. For those providing temporary shelter, we pray for the swift delivery of equipment. And for all those in communities offering comfort and help to their neighbours, we pray that you give them selfless compassion. Lord, we pray for world leaders as they decide how to respond. We pray that you stir each of our hearts in generosity towards the people of Turkey and Syria. Amen. We also pray for ongoing discussions in Northern Ireland. You've brought peace to that country before, Lord, and we pray now that politicians and negotiators will reach an amicable agreement that maintains that peace and helps us all to move forward in unity. We pray for small businesses in Northern Ireland and also across the rest of the United Kingdom as they struggle with supply and demand. Rising costs are wiping out livelihoods and causing misery for many. And we pray that this time, that this time of uncertainty, strikers' demands and tightened belts would find us more willing to help and befriend those in need. You provide for us, Lord, in so many ways. And we pray that support agencies would be your servants in providing for those who are finding life an almost intolerable struggle. As we begin the season of Lent, make us mindful, Lord, of our need to reconnect with you. Help us to find ways during this season to spend time with you, remembering your sacrifice for us and dwelling on our need for repentance and renewal. Thank you for the Lent studies available through home groups and other study groups, and for Alpha, each of these giving opportunities to spend time talking through our understanding, sharing with others, and learning more about you and what you ask of us, as well as the unchangeable love you have for us. We pray especially today for Hannah, as she joins us as Children and Families Minister tomorrow. We're so excited to have her, and pray for her and her family as she settles into her work here. Help her to feel warmly welcomed as she gets to know us and guide her to know your will for our young people and families. We thank you for half term and the chance for many of us to rest and be refreshed. We continue to pray for St Francis School and for those members of our church who work as governors in challenging times. 
we ask for your guidance and wisdom. Thank you for Dawn and her leadership of the school. And we pray that your presence there, so real and tangible, would continue to bless staff, children, parents and governors. As we bring our prayers to a close, we ask for your love and care for those who especially need it at this time. We know that we all have that love and care given freely, but we lift before you any who need to feel especially aware of you and your comfort through illness, loneliness, uncertainty or despair. We ask that Frederick and Marilyn would feel your presence with them and pray for healing for Tricia. And we ask that you would comfort Rob, Emily and the family and friends of Debbie who died earlier this week. Shall we draw our prayers together by joining together in the words that we've heard this morning and that we can say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Linda. And let's just stay in an attitude of prayer as we give thanks for the collection. <clears throat> Lord God, thank you so much for all that has been given through the collection plate at the back, um, through our bank accounts, in whatever way we've been able to give. Um, and uh, in um, uh, whatever form we've been able to give, whether through our time and energy or through our bank accounts. And we pray, Lord, that you would use all these resources to be a blessing in this community and beyond, that we might share your love um, with those uh, around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you like to look up? notices notices but first some bands of marriage so um it's always exciting to have bands of marriage this couple i'm not sure where they're getting married actually they're not getting married here but we'll still be delighted to pray for them so i published the bands of marriage between mr robert brian grant um, and miss helen rachel mears both living in this parish and this is the second time of asking. If anyone knows any reason why they shouldn't be wed, please do let me know after the service. Uh, why don't we just pray for them now? Lord, thank you so much for Robert and Helen, and we pray your blessing on them as they prepare to get married. And beyond that, Lord, we pray that you'd give them a wonderful, lifelong marriage that would be a blessing to all those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Fantastic. Find me notes. What else is happening? What else is happening? I've already mentioned, um, but we've got an Ash Wednesday service at 7 p.m. here in the church. Ashes will be involved. You too can go away with a mark on your forehead. What on earth is all that about? Well, funny you should ask. Um, but uh, uh, repentance isn't a very Tesco's word, is it? You don't nip down to Tesco's and discuss repentance on a regular basis. I don't, just being honest here. But it's actually a brilliant word because um, what it means is turning around. And a pe the period of Lent, we often say oh, it's a time of repentance. But what we really mean is that it's a time of turning back to God. It's that period of the church calendar. Where we've got a real focus on reflection and just turning back to find God at work in our lives. Um, and coming to a service on Ash Wednesday or just reflecting through Lent is just an opportunity to do that in a tangible way. Uh, and so it's a very simple service. Um, we just have the ashes. And again, you, you don't have to have ashes, but just a, a, a tangible sign. God gave us lots of tangible signs. He thought they were so important. He sent his son in person because he knew that we needed real things and real people. He gave us bread and wine to remember him because he knows that really helps us. And actually, we can use ashes, which are a sign often used in the Old Testament and the New to speak of repentance and turning back to God. And that is why we use them. So if you'd like to, seven o'clock on Wednesday, it'd be great to see you. Um, and I'm perfectly aware that you can turn back to God in your own homes if that time and date doesn't work for you. But it is great to be reflecting in that way. 
Grab Nick if you want to sign up to a small group or myself. We'd love to work with finding a time that suits you. If you'd like somebody to pray with you today, uh, we are able to uh, offer. We've got some friends who'd love to pray with you. The comfy red chairs at the back is the place to go. And if people are already being prayed for, just pop back. They're going to sit there um, and wait. They'd love to pray with as many people as would like prayer. Um, so please don't be shy and please don't be scared to be persistent. Um, but that's where they will be. Um, uh, Linda mentioned that we're very excited this week to be wel welcoming Hannah Hiscock. She's our new children and families minister, and she's going to be starting work at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, over the coming weeks, I know that she will be really wanting to get to know you. She'll be in junior church next week. I'm going to try and drag her in and uh, introduce her to all of you in a more formal way. That's only if I can tear her away from our children in junior church. I kind of hope she'll be hesitant to be torn away. Um, it's going to be great to get to know her. Um, I will be asking her to get in touch with um, all of us in the church, really, who've, who work with children and young people. So um, if you're concerned about her getting in touch, please just have a word with me. Otherwise, I will be passing on appropriate details for her to do that. Um, did anybody here wave at me in the room if you had any trouble opening the newsletter that I sent out? No, good. Um, because there were a number of people at the early service who said that they couldn't open it for whatever reason. But if that's not a general problem, that's great. We send out a newsletter. It appears on our website, St. Francis-ValleyPark.org.uk. We um, uh, put that up on a Monday along with um, a recording of this service that goes up on a Monday as well. Um, and, but that's the main way that we let you know what's going on. There's also hard copy of what's happening in February at the back of the room alongside the details of the Lent sermon series and prayer course and the summary of the prayer course. So do grab those. And we're going to serve coffee, which frankly, after all those notices, we're really in need of, aren't we? We're definitely going to need some coffee at the end. But we're going to sing our final hymn. Um, it's a wonderful oldie. Uh, somebody actually said, can't we sing the gospel version? I, I'm really for that. If you want to sway, just you go for it. The words are fantastic. They really, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. A real oldie, but the words are so encouraging uh, as we consider the topic of prayer. So if you're able and you'd like to, let's stand as we sing our final hymn together. Outreach, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead.
final blessing uh, as we go. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those whom you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. And so let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.